Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. So we are going to discuss Bell Collective Season 2, Episode 9, which is the final episode of the season titled Bell Beginnings and Endings. I'm thinking this show ended entirely too quickly, but from watching the um the scenes watching this episode i could understand why it needed to end so um we pick up the show where remember the ladies were at the luncheon to celebrate marie and essie opening additional treatment centers so we have where taisha came comes in and tambra is like nope i'm not about to stay here so tambra goes over to production tells them take off her mic and she was out while tambra is leaving Taisha is trying to talk to her, talking about, Tambra, you don't want to talk to me? You have so much to say, and now that I'm here, you don't want to talk to me? So, okay, all the ladies, other ladies are watching this and in this, and it's like, what is going on? First of all, so Gucci don't know what is happening because she was a part of um, what was going on before. But I believe that um, Aikisha knew a little bit about what was happening. So, so Gucci looks so lost. Tambra leaves and then Marie's like, Tambra, why are you leaving? But she's like, thank you for inviting me. I'm out. Hugs and kisses. I'll see you later. We'll talk about this later. While Tambra is walking out, Taisha is yelling to her as she's going out the door. She's like, you are desperate and crazy and I'm not about to do this. She gets in the confessional and tells us that, listen, she could stay here all she wants. All I know is I am going home to Demond. So that's how Tambra left the party. Now... Marie um, comes back to the party and she's like, I apologize. I thought everything was done. I didn't know this was happening. And Aikisha, I got to give it to Aikisha. She was like, no, 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 I'm not about to do this. I am about to be out right now. She's like, we're supposed to be invited into the collective. This is a sister circle. And for this to be happening, I'm not doing it. Then she gets to the confession. She's like, I'm not about to entertain this side chick. And she was like, out. Now, what I don't understand is why did Taisha need to bring her daughter with her? Because production made sure that they showed her and put whatever her name was and put Taisha's daughter. You could see that um, Raven's mom was just sitting in the corners like, oh my God, I don't want to be a part of this. She just looks so uncomfortable. And um, after Aikisha left, Marie was again apologized to the group. She's like, I thought all of this was over. I thought we, we solved this at the fashion show. So why is it that, um, you know, there's a problem with her, you being here. She's talking to Taisha. So of course, Taisha thinks she's dropping a bomb. She's like, I don't understand. All I wanted to do was clear up the timeline to see if we were both dating Demond or Grady or whatever his name, Demond or Grady or whatever his name is at the same time. Then she goes in and she tells Tambra's business. Like, do she really know any of Tambra's business? She's like, I don't understand why she was doing that because she was engaged at the time. Girl, we already know that. Tambra already told us in season one, that she was engaged to somebody and it didn't work out. So I don't know, you think you're bringing news to the group. That's not news. Then after she drops her bombs and talks a little bit, then she decides, okay, Marie, I'm about to go. So yes, it's evident that you came in there to start some mess with Tambra and Tambra is not engaging. Tambra is giving us um, from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. She's giving us, wow, what's her name? I forgot her name. And that's one of my favorite shows that's about to start. She was like, I am not engaging with you. And she was out. All right. Then Essie, of course, <laughs> Essie is something else. She's like, all right, we're going to blame this one on you, Marie. No, before that, um, Letitia made sure. No, before that, um, Letitia made sure she told the lady. She's like, it wasn't me. I didn't invite her, even though I thought things was over. I mean, just let it be known that I was not the one to invite Taisha. And Marie was like, well, I did because everything was good. And she does all of our events. Yes, yeah, she could do our events. She could be the event planner. Or as um, Tambra called her, the decorator. <laughs> she calls her that. She enunciate every syllable. Yeah, as Tambra called her, the decorator. She could be the decorator or the event planner. But she doesn't have to be a part of the party. I mean, set it up and go. Thank you very much. Here's your money. I appreciate it. Everything looks beautiful. So then Essie was like, again, Marie ruins another event. Marie was like, nah, girl, don't put this one on me. I didn't do this this time. She's like, uh-uh, this ain't me. So they had a cute little chuckle with that. And then now the next scene, 
we have Latrice and her brother Derek talking about she can't go home to Zaddy right now because he's putting too much pressure on me and I need some time to just think. So I can't go home to Zaddy right now. Okay, she I tells her brother that, you know, she feels like Zaddy is fighting her Cliff. I'm not calling him no Zaddy. That Cliff is um, fighting her on her decisions and she wants Cliff to treat her as an equal and um, he's not willing to do that. Now, this is a marriage. This is a union. I mean, there are some marriages who, it seemed like Latrice and Cliff did not have a conversation before they got married or deep conversations before they got married because here we are, Zaddy wants a... <laughs> Zaddy. Here we are, Cliff wants a child and Latrice is like, she's not ready for a kid just yet. She still feels that she's in her prime and um she's just not ready to have she does want to have a family one day. she does want to have a family one day but she's just not ready for it did she say something about having 10 kids uh, her brother was like if you're gonna have 10 kids you need to get started right away or something to that you know if it was her who wanted 10 or cliff wanted 10 but the thing is cliff wants children and he wants her to, to um he's hoping that she's pregnant right now because she's saying she has all these symptoms but um latrice doesn't want to have the baby right now she wants to build her business some more and um then focus on a family but okay it's my opinion but latrice you can start now i mean you have if you have this much money yes you could have a nanny it, cliff already said don't worry about it i raised the baby and you were happy with that but um I don't know. I, I'm kind of conflicted with that. I think the man wants a child. Yes, he have more children. You said that um, the way he communicates with you, to him, he raises his voice and it reminds you of your dad and that's a place that you don't want to be in and stuff like that. So maybe you, maybe you see his interaction with his other children or don't and just is wondering, would he be a good dad to your child? So there's a lot more to unpack with Latrice and Cliff. And hopefully we'll get to see it next season if the show comes back, which I think it will. Um, so her brother tells her, listen, basically go think about what, you know, you could chill here all you want, but consider going back home to your husband because the conversations need to be had between you and him, not you and I. You're married to the man. You need to talk to him. That's basically what he's saying. So now we have a Keisha stakeholders luncheon. Remember she told the ladies that she wanted to um, invite the who's who in Jackson to let them know what she's planning to do on Ferris Street and all that. So we have the luncheon and I must say that the luncheon and I must say that that the decoration was beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful yellow roses, the ladies in their yellow arm um, dresses, as the trees call them, the sun, sunshine girls or the sunflower girls. I guess they're a hosting place in our um, a business in Mississippi that does events, but the setup was gorgeous. I'm telling you, it looks beautiful. I was so impressed. I couldn't get over how those beautiful yellow roses, hope they were real. Cause if it was, I know that place was smelling beautiful as well. So, um, she's getting ready and she's, you know, she has her little check checklist that she's making sure. And as she, it turns out she couldn't find Letitia's menu card. And she came in the confession and she's like, look at God. Akeisha got some shade. She's like, look at this. Of all the menu cards that I can't find, why is it Letitia? And you guys know she's butt heads with Letitia. But she's like, we're going to make it with their businesses and stuff that I'm including everyone in it. And then um, we have the ladies coming one by one. And I don't know why production kept focusing. I'm guessing they're going to have another bell next season because production kept focusing on this one lady. She had in braids and she had on, I think, a gray top. For every few seconds, they kept putting the camera on her, putting it on her, putting it on. I'm guessing they're giving us a hint that maybe we'll see her next season. But I'm not sure who she was. Um... I think Akeisha talked to her briefly, but um, they didn't show it, but they just kept putting the camera on her. So I'm assuming that we're gonna get a new edition um, next season. So all right, everybody comes in. 
um, Akeisha greets them, show them where they're sitting. Everybody has placement cards. You know, that's the way to do it, girl. Class it. Class it up a little bit. You know, she's kind of showing off to Letitia, like, girl, this is how it's done. You know, take. she's kind of showing off to Letitia, like, girl, this is how it's done. You know, take a page from my book because we're not going to have no dirty place up in here. She even mentioned that in her confessional. She's like, we're going to do it classy. We're not going to have no sparkly tablecloths and no dirty plates up in here. So that was interesting to, um, to see her in the confessional do that. Now she brings up the PowerPoint presentation. I'm like, yes, Latish. That's Aikisha. Yes, Aikisha. That's how you do it. She shows the mock-up. She gives a little bit of history about Farish Street, about her family, what she wants to see done in, um, within Farish Street within a number of years, you know, short-term, long-term goals, as she was pointing it out. She even has a mock-up of Latrice's hair store. She has Leticia Pearson Enterprise. She has one of Marie's um, um, methadone clinics in the mock-up and stuff like that. She just made all the ladies feel good about it. Fun to um get some free advertisement. Who don't want to hear about their accomplishments that they're doing and that they're being recognized? So Aikisha did a wonderful job with the presentation. And um after that, the ladies went to talk to each other in a corner. I, it wasn't a buffet style dinner either. I believe they were serving. Yeah, they were serving drinks and you know, it had an actual sit down. I don't think it was a buffet style from what I, if I don't remember correctly. But then at one point we had a little, um, little conversation in the corner. Marie called over Tambra and, you know, apologized to her and told her that I thought, you know, things were good. And I'm sorry if I upset you and made you leave. Letitia also apologized to her and said, you know, I hope everything is good. And, you know, they just talked about it for a quick minute and so... So that was um, Aikisha's luncheon. It was just an overall nice event. It was nice to see this event. It was nice to see. Now in the next scene, we have Marie, Essie, and Leticia. And what they're doing, they're looking for Marie's mom. As you remember, in last week's episode, Marie told us that her mom has gone. She just up and leaves. So she's like, I got to go find her. I need to know what's going on with her so she has an idea of where she is so they get into the little work van or whatever and they're driving around that little city in mississippi i think it's their hometown she says about 40 minutes from where she lived so she's still familiar with the neighborhood it's where she grew up so she's like you know back in the days it was a lot better than what it is now apparently there's a lot of um it's run down there's drug usage basically it's the ghetto now and um, she goes and she knocks on a few doors. And according to Essie, she's like, it's really nerve wracking to actually see Marie knocking on these doors because at any moment, anything bad could happen. So in there, she's like, you seen Lula? Anybody seen Lula? So of course, finally they told her Lula's around at the Yellow House. I guess there's a special house and everybody knows the Yellow House. They need to change the color of that house now. Now that they're... Um, talked about it on the show because apparently it's the trap house so she goes and just before she goes and knocks on the door she's like is that Marie that's Lula Lula comes out she's like she's trying to whisper under her breath she forgets that Marie is Mike she's like what are those TV what are the cameras doing here I'm just going to pretend that we talking or whatever but what I want you to do I want you to just get out of here and give me $30 typical crackhead behavior and I know it's not you know I'm not making fun of it or anything. It's just that it's what it is. You know, her mom is addicted to drugs and she's going to go where she can find her drugs. So she's like, give me $30 and, uh, and get out of here and get out of here. So Marie was like, all right, meet me around so-and-so's house. Uh, her mom was like, um, I'll, I'll be around in about 20 minutes. And from the minute her mom said, love you. And she went back into the house. I knew that lady was not coming back out. So then production and Marie, they said they sat there for about 30 minutes and then they found that it was unsafe and they needed to leave. So that's how Marie and, um, her friends left because there's nothing you could do to really, unless you physically go in there and pull her out, she's not going to come out. Her mom, I believe at this point, she's like, she told her daughter, she's like, I'm an addict. And at some point I'm going to keep going back. 
So Marie fears that that would be the last time she would actually see her mom because of the state she's in. She's like, she's been gone for two weeks. Um, apparently her need is being fed. So therefore she doesn't need to come around me no more. Or she doesn't need to come around me no more. So, and she doesn't want the help that I'm offering. So it's so ironic that, you know, her mom is a drug addict and Marie is the one who has a business that is trying to help drug addicts um, try to clean up their lives or even just um, survive. And her mom won't even use her services. So it, that was quite sad to watch, but I'm, I'm glad that Carlos and the production team actually put it out there to show that everything that um, you see on television is not so polished and clean and wrapped in a bowl like i always say i like his shows because they go behind the scenes they show you what's actually going on in people's lives he's like look this is reality tv we're gonna have to show what the real real is we're not gonna come and shine it up and put a bow on it and present it and say that this is what it is he also focused on people's businesses that are growing and stuff like that so you know see, because that's real reality tv but I digress. So Marie and everybody left and she got back to one of her, I guess her office and she's in the car park and she's talking to Leah. You could see her frustration that, you know, she's out here helping all these other people and her own mom, she can't even save because her mom doesn't want the help. So you could see Marie's frustration and she's going to have to come to the realization that unless her mom wants her help, it doesn't make sense for her to push it. I think she's there already. And um, just focus on the rest of the family because you got a lot going on, girl. You have so much on your shoulders. Here you are. You're raising your grand your um your grandson because his mother died. You're being in that baby's life. You actually have your own children who are still young, and you need to worry about their future. I believe you're working something out with your ex-husband, and you got so many businesses to worry about their future. I believe you're working something out with your ex-husband, and you got so many businesses going on. You gotta, and you, from what I'm understanding, when you um did a, you did a thing with Car not Carlos, you did an interview with Richie Sky, and I believe you did speak about it on the show as well that. You deal with lupus. So you have that illness that you're dealing with. And yes, we did see it on the show in one of the episodes where you were in bed for a little while, laying on the sofa, you could hardly move. That, you know, you do have your flare up. So you have that to deal with. So you know what? It's a it's a shame that, you know, you have to step away from your mom. But in order to heal yourself, you're going to have to just let her decide if she wants to help or not let her come around. So that was Marie and her mom and them situation. That was sad to watch, like I said, but I'm glad they still showed it. All right, so we reached, we we in over her brother's house. Cliff was working and somehow the electric saw that he was using slipped and cut him on his, his wrist or his arm. So he calls the trees for her to take him to the hospital. Cliff, that cut could have killed you. You could have bled out. You call in the trees to take you to the hospital. Why, what's wrong with calling 911? calling the emergency people to come help you. So long story short, okay, they go to the hospital, he get his stitches or whatever, he get his medication, he get his bandage. So now we're seeing them, they're coming home. So she tells him that, you know, he needs to be more careful and she's sad to see that he got hurt like that. But um, somehow I'm thinking the conversation was gonna be all caring and loving and whatever. It turns into an argument. <laughs> Something... At one point, Latrice tells Cliff that he talks too loud. Cliff tells Latrice that your head's strong. Cliff tells Latrice that your head's strong. Latrice, you're always dominating the conversation. And she's like, I'm stressed out or whatever. Then she's like, you know what? Let me take this pregnancy test. She's like, I think I left one here before I went over to Derek's house. So she went into the bathroom and she took the pregnancy test and they're waiting. He's like, how long is it going to take? She's like, not long. So then eventually she shows it to him and she's like, how do you feel? So apparently it was, she was not pregnant. 
And he was like, I feel disappointed. And Latrice is like, I'm elated because I'm really not ready for a baby. And he was like, well, I guess you just got to keep trying because she will have a baby by next, by this time next year. So of course, Latrice rolled her eyes like, okay, we'll see. So that was Cliff and Latrice's conversation. Now we see Glenn still trying to get his woman back. Glenn is actually compromising. Lisa, Latrice, Letitia, they're at, they're at Letitia Pearson Enterprises and Glenn has come over and they, he brought a counselor with him. So the counselor is talking to them both. And the, the question that stood out to me was that, um, he asked Letitia, are you, do you love Glenn? And she's like, yes, I love him. He's like, are you in love with him? Then she paused for a minute. I think he even went to a commercial break and everything. And we came back and she was like, I'm not sure. She's like, I'm not sure. She's like, I want to love him, but I just feel like he's going to hurt me again. And I don't want to take that chance because I've been through so much. Then Glenn tries to turn it around and is like, but you see me going through so much and you don't even acknowledge what I'm going through. And she's like, what are you going through, Glenn? He's like, but I've been depressed. You don't even acknowledge what I'm going through. And she's like, what are you going through, Glenn? He's like, but I've been depressed. She's like, well, if you are, I didn't notice it. I didn't like, I like, she's like, I don't even need, know if I should believe what you're telling me right now that you're going through depression or whatever it is. And he was like, see, you're discounting my feelings or whatever. So they hugged and they cried and they, um, prayed. And that was the session. Of course, the session was a lot longer than that, but you get in the condensed version from me. Now we are at the end of the show. We didn't see too much of Gucci this season um how they close out the show which is usually just focused on something that some uh, each person is doing and then talk about it a little bit so we see so gucci she has a billboard reveal everybody came dressed and they clink clink you know had a glass of champagne to the fact that so gucci had a huge big board um a huge um side of the highway then we have Aikisha. We're showing where she's doing the groundbreaking. Apparently, she's getting ready to open her bar and grill. So they had a groundbreaking break, for that. That was the end of her season, her scene. Then we have Tambra telling us that she is moving in with Demond and they're going to keep trying to have a baby. So we will see if that pans out at um, the next season, season three, but for some reason, I'm not feeling that whole relationship. Like I said before in my other, in my other review, I am not feeling that, um, that relationship with Tambra and Demand. Something is off. Something is off. And I guess eventually, eventually we'll find out. So we have Latrice who is moving her business. Cliff had, I mean, Cliff wanted quite a few things from her and this was one of them. He wanted her to move the business out of the neighborhood where she started and go into a little bit better neighborhood because apparently it's a high crime. It's a high crime um, neighborhood and he didn't feel that it was safe. Of course, Latrice's manager is elated that they're moving. He's like, no more gunshots, no more bombs, no more whatever. So he's happy that they're moving. And, um... So that's one out of two things that Cliff wanted. He has Latrice moving the business. He didn't get the baby like he wanted, but at least he's getting her to move the business into a better neighborhood. Hopefully she's moving to Ferris Street like Akisha had her up on the um on the PowerPoint presentation. Hopefully that's where she's moving the business to. Now we have Letitia moving back in with Glenn. We see her pack, packing up her stuff at her mom's house. And uh, she's moving back in with Glenn. But then at the end, we see it comes across the screen that even though she has moving back with Glenn, she has discovered that Glenn is messaging other women. So who knows what's going to happen season three. We may see Letitia comes back to us, sing back to us single again. And um, apparently Glenn is still cheating. Now, who didn't we focus on? I think it was Marie. Yeah, I think Marie is the only person. We already saw how that panned out. Like we said, Marie has stopped trying to, you know, bring her mother back into the house. She's going to let her come to her on her own terms. And all she's going to do right now is focus on building a business with Essie. And that's it. 
So that was it for the last episode of um, the Bell Collective season. They only did nine episodes, I believe. And like I said, I believe it could have gone on even longer. However, things were a little bit depressing on everybody's story. If you think about it, you know, uh, we have Marie going through it with her mother. We have Latisha, Latisha going through it with Glenn. We have Latrice going through it with Cliff. The only person who was on the high right now, now, I would say would be Aikisha because she has a groundbreaking for her business and her and her husband's business that they're starting out. So that's it. Now, um, I saw the preview where there is a two-part um, reunion coming up. So that should be interesting. According to the previews that I see, we're going to find out if the baby that Glenn is been, has been talking about, if it's actually his baby, because there was a DNA test done. They're going to address the fact that, um, not the fact, but the statement that the ladies say that Keisha called them ugly. So that's going to be addressed as well. And I'm sure we're going to get an update regarding, you know, everybody else's situation. So I'm looking forward to the reunion. I'm sad that the season is over. However, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the reunion. The good thing about it that keeps me going is Love and Marriage Huntsville has just started. I think we're in season two. So I still have my own network. And of course, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is starting also over on Bravo. I'm doing a reviews on that. And we also have the Real Housewives of Potomac coming up. So of course, we're going to do the reviews on that as well. So there's a lot of content out there that I have to put out that I will be putting out. All my shows are back that I'm watching. But like I said, sad to see Bell Collective go, but I'll be looking forward to season three because I've been watching the show since the first episode and I am hooked and Carlos does produce good TV. So thank you for listening. And until next time, guys, be sure to take care.